Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Are you ready to witness something you cannot explain? Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from the bottom left-hand corner of the Nevada Triangle, in a city called Fresno, California. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez, I am your host, I'm also the founder of a group called the Sanger Paranormal Society. Been investigating the paranormal going over 14 years, so I'm just not up here talking about it, actually living it. I have a team. And one of the members of the team is not here. Why? He is sick. So he's at home, and I think he's going to be calling in by telephone, so we'll have him on audio so we can talk to him and uh, just talk a little bit and see what's going on. I know I haven't been here for the past two weeks, and there is a logical explanation for that. Been filming the TV show, and I'm going to fill you in on everything matter of fact, I have a little surprise for you tonight. I'm going to show you something. I think you'll appreciate it for all those who are out of the area and can't see the show. I wonder what can that be? Yeah, I think you guys think you got it. So thank you for showing up wherever you may be around the world on a Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. West Coast time. We are broadcasting live HD video on live stream on our personal network station. You can catch us right now if you have a Roku. You can actually go on there and watch us on your television if you want to get the full spectrum of the HD quality. And you know what? It's pretty damn good, if I say more so myself. And the audio, I hope, is also pretty damn good. So, yeah, um, I am barely awake. I will let you know why. <laughs> So, okay, well, again, thank you guys for showing up on, uh, it's not Sunday, it's Monday. See? I'm way out of it already as it is. It's Monday. I was not here yesterday because I was filming the TV show. Okay, again, thank you guys for showing up again. There's Alan's replacement right there. Somebody told me these are haunted dolls and haunted Raggedy Ann. We've had them here locked up in a trunk. Um, now allowing them to see the light of day because <laughs> you never know, right? So I put them up. Don't be surprised if they start moving. No, I'm just kidding. Well, you never know, okay? Because I am not going to be looking at them and no, there's no strings attached and no, there's nobody. I'm the only one in the studio right now. I'm in control of everything. There's a, So if they start moving or if that one starts to flip me off then you guys let me know um i will not be looking that way actually i look be looking at the screen in front of me in case something does move hopefully i'll catch it but i doubt it again ghosts just don't appear on command it's uh that's just the way it is in the real world so all right i haven't been here we haven't been here the past couple of weeks um and i want to go ahead and uh, fill you in and tell you why as you all know blah 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 We're shooting the TV show for the CW here in Central California. And we are busier, just really, really busy. Um, For those who don't know, and a majority, I'm going to say a majority of you out there, I'm going to say 99.35% of you have never been on a TV show um, that don't know exactly what it 
takes to do a TV show, um, I'm going to fill you in because it's not, it's not easy work. And there's a lot of people involved. Um, well, first of all, so I can get you guys to stick around, I have parts of the first episode that I want to show you tonight, the Bigfoot episode. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the two recreations my production company did because they did an absolute fabulous job. Am I going to show them right now? No. So you have to stick around. I'm going to show them in a little while later. I don't know how long I'm going to go tonight. Uh, I might go for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but not probably for the two hours, okay? Um, because uh, I am dead tired, and uh, and, uh, um, and I'll let you know what's going on. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get a hold of of Alan. I'm going to get him on the line. Hopefully he remembers. I know he's sick. He has a massive cold, and I told him, no, you cannot come over because I cannot afford to have him give me what he has because of all the filming that we are doing right now. And I mean a lot of filming. And there are schedules to be kept. Um, and, you know, um, Alan has just not been feeling good recently. And I, when I say recently, we're talking now for the past couple of months. Um, so let me just go ahead and get a hold of him. Hopefully he remembers. I'm pretty sure he does. Four O dun ba dun 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 and go over there. Go. Oh. That was loud. Let's hopefully he remembers. Oh, there he is. <laughs> is he asleep? Who's this? Hey, is Alan there? Jeffrey. Oh, hang on a moment. Okay. Jeffrey? Yeah. <laughs> I see he didn't remember. Hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. What, what is Alan doing? Huh? What is Alan doing? Who? Alan. What is Alan doing? Yeah. Who is this? This is Jeffrey. We're on the air right now. Huh? Okay. I'm going to hang up. Somebody seems to be drunk over there at Alan's house. I'm not going to. Sorry, guys, but I'm not going to put up with that he knew i was calling so all right um okay so um let me fill you in on what's going on um i we've been filming the tv show obviously we're on right now our third episode the second episode aired a couple nights ago that one was the ufo episode uh, you know what no i take that back it was mostly an introduction of the show um let me tell you because there's a lot of people who have been texting and emailing Alan. And because the first two episodes did not have him in there. And there is a reason for that. Um, for those who don't know what it, what it takes to film a show, um, any type of show for TV, there is a lot of hours put in. Uh, let me give you an example. Yesterday, no, was it yesterday? No, it was, uh, it was Saturday at 1 o'clock. I left to go start filming, and I didn't return until 4.30 the following morning. So we're talking 14 hours, 14 and a half hours. We were filming on location, doing different stuff. So I, and then I had to get up and go to work two hours later at 6. I had to get up at 6.30. And I went to work, and I only did two hours, and I had to come home because I just couldn't keep my eyes open. And you guys all know what I do for a living. So it takes a lot to do, uh, um, you know, to, 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 do, to do the filming. To do, it, 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 it takes a lot. Alan right now, for all those who don't know, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys do know, Alan has had physical 
problems since he had that operation many moons ago. And a lot of people don't believe that. Um, you know, he goes with us when he can to the mountains, but he can't walk with us, go hiking or anything. He has to stay at the campsite and just stay put because he can't. And even though he's there, it takes a lot for him. He has this bag of drugs that's big, okay? Um, matter of fact, we had a photo shoot with Alan about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. All we were doing is standing in three positions uh, right next to each other. But he couldn't stand up and hold his leg in one position for more than a couple of minutes. And it hurt him. And he was out for the count. So, Alan... Um, there's no way, because of the strenuous work it takes to film, there's no way Alan could, could do it every single day, every single time that we need to film. There's no way Alan could pull this off. All right? There's absolutely no way. Um, it, it's just because he is, he, I mean, to me, you guys don't see him, but he is getting worse as, as, you know, as we progress. And... You know, um, he's just recently got really sick. His immune system sucks. Um, he's passing kidney stones because of all the drugs that he takes, poor dude. And I, like I said, you know, he just can't do what he used to do. And even what he used to do, we're talking four years ago, three years ago, he's still walking around with his cane. And we might go walking for about a couple hours, three hours, and he's out for the next two days on, on in the bed. He can't move. Poor dude. That's just That's just him. He's... He's trying really bad to get out there with us, but there's just no way. He's, he's, he's hurting really bad. So in order to do this TV show, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to take part of it, part in it to an extent. So he will be appearing in certain episodes, but in every single one, there is no way he can do it because right now, when when you get a TV show, it's you you film six months out. So in other words, if we start filming now, then within six months, the season will be ready to go. Then they'll start airing it. So it's like we're not in a rush right now. We're shooting one week out. You follow me? We're shooting one week. Edit the weekend. They air it, at, and then they, and they have to give it to like for example. We just finished shooting this. They are editing it. They, they were editing it all night last night and all day today, and they're going to give it to the Fox Network today by five because they have to have it to put the, to put the closed caption on it to make sure the commercials are correct as they input them where they're supposed to be, and make sure there's no glitches. Um, and then they air it this following Saturday. So within we're we're filming within a week out. Everybody is just, oh, it, it, it's, it's freaking incredible. We were at the Sanger Herald for 14, close to 11 hours on sun, Saturday. Okay. And it's, you know, shoot, shoot, and shoot, and shoot, wait around, get the camera set up, lighting, shoot, shoot, shoot. You know what I'm saying? There's so much that it entails. It's crazy. My production company, you have to understand there's no budget involved here. My production company is doing what they can at this point in time. You know, as we start off on each episode, we are or they are making each episode better and it's going to get better and it's going to get better and it's going to get better. You know that something big is going to happen here very soon because the CW here in Fresno is giving us instructions now of what they like and don't like. I've already, um, they, they actually said that we won first did on the show. And which means that I'm, I'm pretty damn excited about that. It could go either way. We could get in, uh, picked up by someone else. But at this point, they're very, very interested or else they would have never given us 26 episodes for the CW. Okay. Um, so right now, it's nonstop filming. I am, my eyes are just falling asleep right now. I, I slept on the couch today for about four hours and I still haven't caught up. Um, and so as far as Ellen goes, Ellen is still part of the team. He will appear in certain episodes. So let me tell you where we're going with the TV show now. It is not a talk show format. Okay. We 
had meetings and decided that a talk show format at this point in time would be a little boring because we don't have the live audience, the entertainment, the facilities to do it. So the production company said, well, you know, Jeff, you've been investigating the paranormal. You are an investigator. You have so much content that nobody really has seen. Granted, you guys probably have seen most of it because you guys have been watching us every Sunday night for how many years? So you guys know what we've done, where we've been, and what we have. The TV world has no clue. They have no clue, right? So what we decided to do, and that's one of the reasons why I brought the girl involved, is because I want somebody now, I want a team to go out and do a little more research and investigate the cases that I have already have in my pocket, already done, and even do more. I will also be there with them. So we picked up two people, obviously the female and now a, a, another news reporter, male. And that's it. That's where we're going right now with those three. Um, now, if you go, for example, I'm going to give you an example, Paranormal State, all right? You know how they had was it Jim Coffey, the psychic, come in every once in a while and do his stuff? Well, that's how we're going to have Alan come in and do his stuff. You know, Alan is still a big part of this, this team. Um, he has, when, when we're going to be talking about evil, um, when we're going to be going camping, bigfooting, big-time cases, well, then he'll go with us and he'll be part of the team. But right now, it is just going to be me, the girl, and the other guy. Um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you why, and it's because we've already had some major people saying that, you know, if you guys get picked up, which it looks like it's very good possibility right now, 99 point blah, blah, blah percent, that when they give us a budget and there's a lot of money involved here because they want a top ass show shot with no layovers, with no holding back of anything. It's got to be done. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? That they can't have any, there, there can't be a liability involved. All right. That is one of the reasons why I had to, I had to say goodbye to Heidi. It has nothing to do with their disability. You have to understand this is business. Okay. I did not plan for me to get on TV. It was just an accident. Okay, I was going to do this and just have fun with it. But if I can take this out to the, to the world and show what I've been doing and what I have and what continue to do it, I want to do that. Can I make a living out of this? Maybe. But the big boys who have the money and who want to give us the money for the production, for, for everything, when we sign the contract, it's like you have to be there when... You have to be there every day to shoot, no matter what. You can't be sick. You know, if you have a cold, you got to be on there. You can't tell me your leg hurts. I don't care because we're, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars pertaining to the type of quality show that they want. Okay, so you guys remember Heidi would call in. She would not come on because either she would be in the hospital and she would not be there. And it's because, because you guys all know, you know, she's, her head is not attached to her body. She has a lot of, lot of difficulty. Well, unfortunately, the networks, they don't want that. Okay. Now, as far as Ellen goes, he is in the same predicament. Poor dude. I feel sorry for him. But, you know, he had an operating ac uh, an operation. There was an accident, and they screwed him. They screwed his life. The poor dude, they screwed him over big time. And I know he's having the best time of his life here. And we're going to keep doing this. As a matter of fact, we're going to keep doing the show. We're not going to stop doing the Sunday show. But unfortunately, right now, it's because we're filming like crazy one week out. It's like I'm barely right now. I am. My eyes are barely open right now for you guys. OK, but I wanted to come in here because, you know, I love the stuff and I don't want to lose you guys. And. I don't want you guys to say, oh, he's a big rock, you know, big TV star now. He doesn't give us, you know, he doesn't care about us. That's not the case. Not the case at all. 
So we at my production company wants to incorporate this show with the TV show in a certain way. And it's going to happen. I mean, the, the, my production crew right now, they're not getting paid. They're putting up their own money, their time. They put their life on hold. They're from Fresno. And, you know, it's like last night after we finished. I, oh, yesterday I went to go shoot at 1, expecting to get off at 5, to come here to do the show. I got home at 12 o'clock this morning. So another 11 hours shooting yesterday. That's why, that's why I had to say, you guys, I can't, we're not going to make it. I can't make it. Because we, we shot 11 hours. Excuse me. 11 hours yesterday, 14 hours the day before. All right? Um, and that's the way it is. There's poor Alan. There's no way he could. If I can barely make it, there's no way he would be able to do this. No way. But he is still going to be involved in the TV show. We're still going to bring him in and in certain parts. But the whole idea, again, of the TV show is I have done my part meaning investigating. Now I'm going to send my two guys out to investigate even more. I'm going to go with them, and we're going to get out there. And right now it's about the Central Valley. There's so much going on here in the Central Valley. It's freaking incredible. I mean, we were at the Sanger Herald shooting, and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, right? And all of a sudden the door opens, and the sergeant from the Sanger Police Department walks through the door. And he's like, what's going on in here? And he goes, is Dick Shepard here? And, which is the manager of the facility. And, and he goes, yeah, Dick Shepard can run. Hey, how's it going? And he goes, are you okay? <laughs> so he had no, you know, they had no idea that we were shooting in there for the wee hours of the night, in the morning. And then you know, we were telling him, I introduced myself to him, and, and he's tripping. He goes, whoa, this is cool. So then he proceeded to tell me about his stories about Sanger, and then he called his, he called on the, on this, um, he goes, man, I gotta, I gotta tell what's his name to come over here. And he got on the uh, microphone and he goes, uh, you and a phone of mine, uh, well, you know, come on over the saying, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, a matter of freaking five minutes, another patrol officer walks through the door. And now, you know, they're two talking, they're telling us about stuff, about Snake Road, about shadows at N Street and 7th Street that the sergeant saw, footsteps that he heard on Snake Road. So I go out to the, while they're talking to the rest of the gang there. I, I walk out to the to the to the car to my truck to get something, and I notice there's seven or eight patrol cars parked right there in the street in front of us. Them all, <laughs> all of them, all of them came over to see what was going on because this stuff is interesting, and I'm pretty sure all those patrol co- you know, patrol officers had, you know, they had experiences, and we were getting some last night. As a matter of fact, we were going to involve a couple of police officers in one of our episodes here pretty soon. Um, But anyways, it's, you know, I feel bad for my production company because they're not getting paid at all, not a dime. But their name is on this TV show, and they're doing one hell of a job with what they have. Um, You know, the first episode is always, you always have problems because, like I said, we're shooting a week out. Um. You know, if we had extra time, they could fine-tune things. And if we had money, we can buy the best equipment in the world and the audio would be better. And But you know what? They're doing a fantastic job as it is right now. And, you know, my camera guys, my um, Chris, the guy who's, who's doing the camera work, is just so effing good at what he does and editing. Um, he, he is a perfectionist. He's excited about this project because he... Um, he he loves this stuff, so he's doing a fantastic job. And and I I, I know they're not listening right now because they're probably asleep because they're probably they were probably up all night editing. Um, but anyways, so that's where we're at right now with the TV show. Um, you know, Alan would be here right now, but he's sick. Um, and uh, it, and and it's kind of okay because last week I think he had kidney he was passing kidney stones because of all the medication that he takes. Um. So, um, so there, that, that's where we're at right now. I'm not trying to ditch you guys on Sunday. Is it just because, you know, the weekends is when we, it's when we do most of the shooting and the filming. And, you know, like I said, I thought I was going to be here yesterday. And unfortunately we, we filmed for 11 hours yesterday. And prior to that was 14 hours. So that's the way it's going right now. And, you know, Alan could tell you, he was with Finding Bigfoot when they were shooting down here and it was nonstop. Those guys were shooting 16, 20 hours a day, no matter what conditions, rain, snow, um, 
it's ridiculous. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. And that's why, you know, those guys get paid what they get paid. But that's just the way it is. So, okay, so that's where we're at right now with the TV show. In a little bit, I'm going to show you. So the first episode on TV was about sightings around Avocado Lake here in, in south, uh, northeast of Fresno, California. And like I've told you before, we've had three sightings not too far from Avocado Lake. And so they did recreations of two of the uh, cases. One was, remember I've told you that uh, we had two kids walking across the street near an orchard to go play around this marshy area, and they saw a big hairy thing walk in to the sticker bushes and disappear, and they ran home. They uh, did a recreation from there. Um, and my, it also, it, it happens to involve my son. My son is one of the actors in that, so you'll see him. You'll, there's two guys I'm pretty sure you will recognize my son because he, they say he's a mini-me look-alike. <laughs> Poor dude. Um, the other one is Keith the Farmer. They did a recreation with Keith the Farmer on his property. That one turned out really, really good. Uh, so I'm going to show you each one um, separately. Uh, what time is it right now? It's 6.30. Um, let me call Alan again and see if whoever answered the phone is not smoking crack again. Because he knew I was going to be calling him, so I don't know why. He could be asleep. I'm going to give him one more chance. Again, he could be asleep, so I don't know. Hello? Okay. My son, Jeffrey. <laughs> what? I thought it was my son, Jeffrey, earlier. No, we're, um, a a Alan. Alan. He's asleep. Okay, okay, never mind then. That's cool. Okay. So, okay. All right, all right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. All righty. So, so, see, so that's what I'm talking about with Alan. Alan is getting worse, you guys. He's getting really bad. Um, I mean, he's getting really, really bad, you guys. And he, you have to understand, it's not like I see him every single day of the week. The only times I see him is on Sunday. And at home, all he does is, is lay on the bed because he can't do shit. And he's getting worse, poor dude. Um, so... You know, I'm going to try to incorporate him as much as I can in the TV show. Hopefully he can still come in here and do the Sunday show. I'm pretty sure he can. Just right now he's sick. And um, and he gets sick a lot. Obviously, again, you guys only see him on Sunday. because And when he comes here on Sunday, sometimes he's barely making it. He barely walks through that door. But, uh, I don't, you know, without doing this, I don't know what, you know, I, <laughs> it, it, he, he lives for this stuff. He does. So that's why I want to keep doing the Sunday show. And I'm still going to do it re regardless, but I, you know, for him especially. Um, um, but, you know, the poor dude, it, it, he's getting really bad um, to the point where his leg is, man, I, I, I mean, the guy is hurting really bad. So, um, you know, try to talk to him a lot on Facebook if you guys can. Um, send, him, send him messages. Uh, encourage him, um, but um, like I said, it, it's, he doesn't. When, when he's here talking to us, it seems like everything is a okay. But when the camera's off, it's like, uh, you know, it's like I, I wish you guys could see that. But uh, or I hope you realize where I'm, what I'm telling you, okay? But um, but yeah, that, so that's the reason why he's not going to be able to really participate in the TV show that much. It's because he can't. Physically, he can't. So I don't want you guys saying that, oh, you guys are kicking out Alan because it's all about you. And I know I'm going to get that, but that's not the case at all. Okay, so he's just, he's, he's, he's in a bad place right now. And and his it's, it's only going to get worse for him because his leg is dead. 
there's no bringing back his leg. His leg is gone. And it's affecting his whole body. And it, it just, it, they, those doctors effed him up when they left that thing in his leg and clogged up his artery. And when he died on the, on the operating table. So, okay, um, enough of that. So, did I mess you guys up on that? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I had to tell you the truth about Alan. Okay, um, so there you go. Uh, that, that's the story on Alan. You know, he is really trying his hardest to be here on Sunday. Sometimes he can't. And sometimes he is, but he's like, Phew, poor guy. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is we had to, because of the CW um, putting their two cents in now, because they are so effing interested in my TV show, I am so excited. My, that's why my production company are so excited right now, because something is going to happen very soon with my, with my TV show, you guys. I can honestly say that. It looks like it's going to happen. It it is going to happen. Um, I don't. I mean, it it it's, it sounds it's freaking incredible. You know, I started this how many years ago, and just as a freaking hobby, and I started doing things, and now I'm, now it's like their production for the production is on the CW. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the first recreation with sound. Bree is going to be talking at the very beginning. And uh, again, this is the first episode, the production crew. Okay, so what it is, is it's Brie talking with the recreation of the two kids seeing the Bigfoot. And then in the middle of all that, it's me in here in the studio sitting down with David Ragosa talking. But I'm not going to show you that because the audio sucked on that and it's boring. It's, again, it's, it, I've already told you all the stuff about David Ragosa and all of our sightings. That's all we do is rehash because the because excuse me TV land has never heard don't know about David Ragosa so we had to fill him in so for you guys it would have just been um, rehashing all the stuff that we've done with David Ragosa that's it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the recreation with the two kids and then we're gonna talk a little bit about that and then I'm gonna show you Keith. Farmer's Keith recreation with audio. Okay, guys? And then you're going to see the logo. The, um, the production company came up with a, a new logo. And that is one of the reasons why I've never made shirts, you guys. Because I, 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 in my heart, I knew we were going to come to this point And there was going to be a new logo involved for shirts and hats and whatever. And so they came up with one. And it's that's what what we're gonna use. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to go to screen. Is I'm going to show you the recreation. Let me go ahead and pause it there. Let me undo that. Okay, guys, here we go. No volume on that. Hold it, guys. Let me. Oops. Oh, somehow that never came on. There it is. All right, there we go. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Gigantopithecus, a large hairy creature that stands on two legs, a creature with a history of sightings, and an existence shrouded in mystery. Many in the scientific community consider it a character of folklore, hoaxes, and simple misidentification. Also you remember think of Bigfoot, the you think of video doesn't the fit Northwest. the screen because it's anywhere it's where there's large TV. trees so you might lose something and the mountains are in your landscape. Above. But for some, Bigfoot is real, and right here, here in the lower foothills of our valley floor. I'm Bree Rose, and this is Paranormal Central.
story starts with two boys walking on their favorite path home through a dry riverbed. But something would happen that ordinary day that would make it extraordinary. While picking up rocks, the movement caught the corner of their eye. What they saw they thought was a bear. However, it would turn out to be something much scarier. Behind a small bush, it would turn out to be some giant ape-like creature. The creature stood and studied them for a moment before the boys ran off. This sighting would be the first of many to happen within a four-year span. From farmers to local residents to vacationers, calls would start pouring in of sightings of these creatures around Avocado Lake and the surrounding areas. These reports being also similar raise questions to what's being seen in the foothills surrounding Avocado Lake. Is it a hoax? Is it a man? An animal? or something yet to be discovered. Today on Paranormal Central, we will study the case of Keith, a local farmer, David Ragosa. Both have seen things that cannot be explained by conventional wisdom. When we come back, we will hear from David Ragosa and our own Bigfoot hunter and host, Jeffrey Gonzalez. Um, just to let you guys know, that was the first time you have seen Bree, and unfortunately, that's going to be the last time you've seen going to see Bree. We had to. Um, we're going to a, a to a different direction. We found a replacement for Bree. Unfortunately, I mean, I liked her and everything, but it is out of my hands. Uh, when it comes to actors and actresses, if they don't fit the part, then the production company and the CW. Um, had other things they are working on, so we had to find a replacement so that Bree is no longer with us. Um, so, the, like I said, the show is it's, it's, it's still in work in progress. We have 26, actually now 23 episodes that we want to do. And we're, every episode is, is, you know, we're working. It's not, every episode is not going to be the same thing. You have to understand, it, we're not a ghost show. So every episode is not going to be about ghosts. We're not a UFO show, so not everything is going to be about UFOs. You know what I'm saying? It's every episode, it's going to be totally different. Totally different. Um, and so we're changing the way the show is. Um, like I said, we still have, uh, I still have a new girl now, and she is badass. Put it to this way. Her, her, her last her, her name is Hillary Gunner. Last name is Gunner, right? G U N N E R, and she's into weapons. She's a gun girl, guys, and she is a very pretty girl, and she is she shoots crossbows. She has rifles and pistols. So when we are up looking for Bigfoot, she's going to be carrying a sidearm, and who knows what she's going to be carrying around. Bad ass right there. Okay. Um, so the, uh, so I, and, and she's a geek in itself. She loves this stuff. I mean, she's into everything we talk about, you know, vampires and all that kind of stuff. So she is definitely going to fit the part. Um, uh, do I have a picture to show you? Okay. Let me, um, I'm going to email me a picture. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to show you something really quick. Hold on. Bear with me. I think you will enjoy this tremendously. All right, hold on. So let me find it. Would it be this one? Sure. Let me email myself that one. Um, 
that one, that one, and a close-up of her there. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to email me some pictures, some actual posters that were made like, I mean, they put it this way. Because of what we're doing, a lot of people want to get involved. They want to participate somehow because they know this thing is going to take off. So they are donating their time and their money and their energy in this. And they they found, if well, you know, because they're in the produ production company, they know people. They found one of the top photographers here in Fresno to come in and take photographs of all of us. And, um, I mean, we're talking within a day. He, he, he had already made some posters. Sure, he's fine-tuning these posters, but... Um, it's like he is excited because he, you know, he wants his name on this production. So, like I said, just if you guys mind, don't mind, uh, you, I, you, you guys are going to enjoy this. Trust me when I say that. So hold up here. All right. So, uh, what happened here? Okay. So let me go to my mail and oh you know what you're probably going boom it's probably so loud right now let me uh let me uh, silence that hold on you guys because i know you're probably blowing you guys out of the water sorry all right there you go all right so let me go there and go there let me go there. you've got mail and it hasn't come over the air yet so it's probably sending them right now so as soon as they come over I will um, place them on the desktop, and I'll show you. Um, there are posters that he made really fast, um, and uh, and I want to show them to you. But um, there they are. That was quick. That's awesome. So let me just put them over to the desktop. So, like I said, just hold off, you guys. Image as one. You know, I'm playing with the big boys now, you guys. Um, I don't know what else to tell you, but what happened now? It's it's pretty damn exciting to get to where I'm at right now, and I have people who are making me look good. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it's it's awesome. Hold on here. I'm still downloading. Still downloading. All right, so I'll let me see this one. I know, boring, but you know what? Just bear with me. All right, let me find them on the desktop. There's one. There's two. There's three. Uh, where's the one with all of us? I have to show you that one because that's like all of us. And you guys are probably going, I want one, I want one. And I totally would understand if you would want one. So, okay. Hopefully you can see the whole thing, but I'm going to go and show it to you right now. There is the poster. So now let me show you another one. There's Hillary. Pretty badass, huh? You guys are looking at that, right? Let me make sure. Screen, yeah. Now, I, I don't have chat open, so I can't... I can't... Um, listen to you guys or, or or read what you guys are saying oops sorry sorry that one don't want to see that one and uh so that's pretty much it i i didn't really show you charles charles didn't come up but that's pretty much the team right there okay so there you go 
Um, eventually, those are going to be made as posters. And sh- I mean, there's so much, you know, so much that that they're going to do. It, it's this is I've been waiting for this to happen, for somebody to come in and excuse me and um, and run with it. And this is what they're doing because they want to see it succeed so badly. And I want it to su- su- succeed so badly as well that I'm having a freaking blast and they're having a blast doing it, putting it all together. So, so all right. Um, well, it's, uh, let me go ahead and I guess I can show you, oops, let me show you. How come I can't? All right, I'm going to go and show you the other, um, the other reenactment of Mr. Keith the Farmer. I'm up. And, uh, so let me go ahead and start it from the very beginning. Make sure it's not muted. Let me go to there. Go to screen. Here we go, guys. I'm up and uh, working my fields and getting ready to plant uh, lemon trees, a lemon orchard up here on the ranch, on the East Ranch, East River Ranch. And um, uh, one night I have a guy working, we're doing split shifts, we're doing a 24 hours with a bulldozer up on top and we're ripping the ground and we're knocking down the top of the hill up there and uh, one night. And I go up to relieve my driver and I'm driving up the hill and I notice off to my left I see this 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 movement down by one of the trucks down in the, the lower spot of the ranch, and uh, so I I take my monocular and start using my monocular to look at him, and uh, I see a guy's head pop out from around the truck. So I stop the truck and I stand on the side of the road and I yell down at him. I say, "Hey, dude, what are you doing down there? I can see you down there, man. I got my monocular." I can see you. Who are you? And I got my monocular. I'm looking like this, and I, that they don't say anything. And the head looks around the side of the truck again, and then pretty soon another head pops up on the other end of the truck, and there's two heads looking at me. And so I take out my gun, and I said, "Hey, I'm gonna shoot. Just tell me who you are. What are you doing here? What are you doing on my property? I know you're standing right there behind the truck. I'm gonna shoot. Come on out." And they wouldn't talk, wouldn't answer, wouldn't say anything. So I peeled off two rounds and they took off running. So they took, when they took off running, they started running due north up towards the top of the hill and uh, towards the top of the mountain through the bottom of my ranch and you have to go up a hill and run up the hill. So I knew they were going that way so I went up my road and I was going to go up around the road and go up to the top and catch him and meet him at the top and basically just meet, be standing there when they come running up the hill and see who they were. So as I'm going up the road uh, to, to, to go around to catch them, and I, I'm, I'm going up the road and all of a sudden these five and six bodies of whatever run past the front of my headlights on my truck. And right across from me, I said, oh my God, what was that? And um, so I stopped my truck. I stopped my truck, I get out, and I uh, go out to the, the side of the road, and I look down the side of my field, and I have a, we have a big irrigation steel pipeline down there. So I run over to the side of the road, and, I'm, and, I, and I look down the side of the road with my binoculars, I'm looking, and I see five or six um, humanoid-type bodies and or people or whatever it was i didn't i couldn't tell what it was through my monocular but one of them seemed to be carrying a pig on his back so he's carrying a pig and or it seemed to me to be a pig a, a big dude and he was the, t- the trail the uh, last guy running and he went to jump that pipeline down there he tripped on that pipeline and the pig flopped out of his hands or whatever he was carrying over his shoulder flopped out of his hands rolled and hit the ground and he rolled 
and the other four or five of them went running over there, running over, jumped over the fence, and kept going out into the orange grove. And this dude, big dude, turned around, came back, got up, jumped back over the pipe, picked up the thing that dropped, put it over his shoulder, started running, scaled the pipe, and ran right out into the field behind the rest of them. And then you could hear them out there just talk, kind of making some weird noises. Like one of them was way over here to the left, the other one was way over here to the right, but shit, you could hear them talking. And it was almost like you wouldn't have a feeling that they were telling each other where to, that there was a pickup point or where to meet, a place to meet. So now that those guys were gone, I thought, oh man, that is just weird. So I got back, ran back and got in my truck, drove up to, to the top of the hill to meet the other two guys, cut them off at the pass, saw my guy on the tractor. I had a guy up there working the tractor, and his lights were real short. He's just working a real short area, so he can't see out very far. I drive around behind and go up to where the guys are supposedly coming up the top. They already been up to they already made it to the top. They were over the top at the top of the my little road there where the where the guy was working the tractor behind them and they kept running and they went straight up the side of a vertical mountain and would not stop running and I stood down there and was yelling and screaming at them to stop. You know, please stop. What have I done? What did, who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing here? and pulled off another round and they just kept running and then they ran up to the top of the mountain when they got to the top of the crest of the mountain I saw a red flashing light and then I saw them gone they went over the top of the mountain they were gone so I ran over there real quick got got on my the guy run, stopped the guy on the caterpillar told him to stop 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 he stopped I said Randy jumped up on the cat and I, did you see that man and he goes, what? I go, dude, there, there's like five or six guys running over across that way. Two dudes are running around the back going up the hill that way. This is crazy. My name is Keith, the farmer, and this is my story. All right. Stay tuned for scenes from... So. So there you go. Like I said... um, this is just bits and pieces of it. Uh, I wanted to show you the recreation because I, you know, I think they were done really well. Um, and uh, so there you go. Um, they promised us that they would put the episode, the CW, on their website so all of you guys can watch them. And I'm, I don't know what, I, I, mean, I think maybe they're waiting for the first good episode so they can start putting them up. So like I said, this one here, it was not up to par on the production crew. It just wasn't all there. So the sound was uh, bad in some places. Um, and um, the fall, the second one, was, it did a lot better than the first episode. But it was just me introducing myself to the TV land people, basically. Um, and then, uh, then this episode here coming up this Saturday is going to be the Sanger Herald. And there you go. So, um, you know, it's funny. The chat's not even working right now. I don't know why. I'm, I'm actually sort of kind of on chat, and I... So, no, there it goes. It just, I don't know why, but, it, like, it stopped. So, all right. Okay. Um, so, I would take some phone calls, but unfortunately, I lost my 24-hour hotline iPhone while filming that's how tired it was i don't know where i where i left it where i dropped it i've called people and i as of about five hours ago i had to suspend the number <laughs> because i don't want or suspend that service on that number because i don't want anybody finding it and then making calls or doing anything to it so um i cannot have um anybody call in right now because i don't have that phone and i don't want to give you my personal number because that just would not work out. That's all I need for you guys to know my personal number. And uh, that that wouldn't work out. So, um, so sorry. Um, so, um, I don't know what else to do. Uh, like I said, I am, I haven't, well, let's, okay, let's talk about a little bit about the Super Bowl halftime show two, well, like a couple, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Um When I first saw Lady Gaga and the halftime episode, 
I was going, this looks pretty tame. There's really nothing going on that I can see right off the bat. There might have been a couple of things. Uh, but otherwise, you know, she did a solid performance. But then, after it was all said and done, and people analyzed it and placed their comments on YouTube, they made videos on it, and people came up with stuff that, okay, how did, where did that come from? Um, the, I, I saw two things that caught my eye. And one of them, both my wife and I saw it, but I just thought it was unusual until I just recently saw it again. And, but do you remember when Lady Gaga was singing on one of the towers and she had a, a, a stick, a cane with a Merkaba, a Merkaba on it, but part of it was broken off. And I noticed right now when I saw it again that she took part of that off and she was using it like she was talking on it or something. Um, why don't you Google Merkaba, M-E-R-K-A-B-A. And it's basically a symbol and um, that's what she was basically putting out there on stage. Uh, even back behind the stage in bits and pieces was part of the Merkaba. And I believe that if it was all put together, it would you would see the symbol. Now, I caught something else, too. And I saw it, but I didn't think anything of it. Somebody sent me a snapshot of it. When she's in the audience and she does a, a wardrobe change and puts on the helmet, the football helmets, uh, the football equipment helmet and whatever, and, and not the helmet, sorry, the shoulder pads. And she runs on stage and starts singing. At one point on the stage, she comes to the corner right in front of the camera and she puts her arm out. And I saw right here underneath this part, if you're looking underneath the sleeve, because she had short sleeve, there was a instrument there. You know what instrument it was? A trumpet. She has a tattoo of a trumpet, a huge trumpet right here underneath her arm or her armpit. And if you guys um, have seen the show in the past, you know we have talked about trumpets. Uh, we've talked about Trump and his... Vice President Pence saying it really fast. The two names together, Trump Pence, Trumpet, and those sounds that people have been hearing all over the world sound like horns or trumpets. And then all of a sudden, it, you can tell that Lady Gaga wanted you to see her tattoo under her arm because she's like, look, a trumpet underneath her arm. What do you think that meant? Why would, why would anybody, for that matter, tattoo a trumpet on your body was it real or was it actually was it a real tattoo or was it something they actually placed on her as a temporary tattoo for the actual halftime show so she can show it to you go back and watch it it's on youtube you guys watch the uh you know her her it's like 13 minutes her halftime show but watch, I think it's like halfway through is when she gets on stage and she that's when she has the shoulder pads for the football getup and she's dancing on stage and all of a sudden she comes to the corner of the stage in front of the camera and she's, you know, doing this with her arm and you can see the trumpet underneath her arm right here near her um, underarms. Was that the subliminal message to tell you something? I just don't know why anybody, did she grow up learning the trumpet, and she found that I want a trumpet put on my body. Um, so go back. If you think I'm smoking crack, I could be, but I saw it with my own eyes, and I'm not the only one who saw it. It was like a subliminal message for only a split three, four seconds, but it's there. Go check it out. What does that mean? I don't know. Am I going to really just go out there and analyze the whole thing? No, I'm not. You can take it however way you want. I think she did a fabulous job. But if there are a lot of people who dissected it and are giving their two cents, 
And a lot of them is like, wow, they took, totally overanalyzed it. But then again, hey, they're not, you know, people are now noticing um, halftime shows and um, because it's so obvious now to the people who are on the Internet talking about these, like, you know, the shows that we do, there's, you know, all kinds of paranormal shows and conspiracy shows and and they catch this stuff. And for the people who don't catch the stuff, who watch these shows, get their information from us. And um, so now it's like they have to really be discreet and make it very subliminal so you can hardly even catch it. But they're trying to feed it to you because it's their job. Did you guys see now? Obviously, I think we had our show during that night, but the Grammys where Beyonce um, came out and did her little number at the Grammys, which was a couple of weeks ago, uh, two or three weeks ago, and her getup. You can take that a whole different direction. I mean, the way she was dressed in gold, right when I first saw it, it reminded me of the Virgin Mary, of her, the way her halo was on her head, the way she was dressed in gold. I went on the internet and actually found a picture that is pretty much dead on to what she was wearing. But then there's a lot of other people who are saying that um, what she was wearing was not the Virgin Mary, and it was uh, another symbol. I forgot what it was. But the reason why I picked the Virgin Mary only because of the some liberal messages she was throwing out at us, and that is when she was out the, on the table, at the end of the table, she was on a chair, and all of the women or the girls around that large table reminded me of the Last Supper. During the Christ era. That's what that reminded me. And I wasn't the only one, guys. Um, a lot of people were saying it was totally different. It was, and I forgot the name again right now. My brain is just totally gone right now. I can't even think. And my voice is probably going too. But um, but uh, again, it was, an, I believe, it was, and I don't want to say it was a ritual, but it had something to do with... You know, they're trying to feed us negativity and, you know, their their way of worshiping what they believe in. And they're feeding it all to us. You know, a lot of people were saying, you know, they, everybody was going, boy, she sure thinks highly of herself doing all this. And kind of funny that um, Santana came out and said, you know what? Beyonce lost against Adele because she can't sing. She can just yell, but she can't sing. Um, and you know how Adele was when she was receiving her awards and her album of the year or whatever it was beating Beyonce. She was like, I'm sorry, Beyonce. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't send me that. Well, she didn't say that, but you can tell it's like Adele kind of knows how strong Beyonce is in the music industry. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that Kanye was, didn't go up there and say, give this to Beyonce, boo. So yeah, that's, uh. That's what I think about Beyonce. I don't really care much for her. Go ahead and send me hate mail. I really don't care. I really don't care. So, all right. You know what? Um, it's 7.05. I, I would take calls, but I can't because I don't have a phone for you to call. All right. And again, I'm sorry, but I didn't do homework. But I wanted to come on here and tell you and give you an update on the TV show. Um, it's going really good. I'm excited. My production crew is excited. The CW itself is excited because they are in communications with their corporate office in Texas that owns about 83 affiliate stations around the United States, which includes ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, the CW, and other stations where I can definitely see our show on. And here is a really good chance this is going to happen, guys. All right, But it's going to take a lot of hard work. And I'm giving it my 150 percent as well as my production company, um, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to to do what I sort of kind of have been planning for only for a short amount of time. But it, I, I got to get this on TV because I got to show people. And, and you know what's good though? Okay, check this out. And me, even my production, my producer, even said this that. You guys know I have been trying to get Hollywood to pick up my show, but they just didn't see it. 
They didn't see it at all. They didn't see the big idea. And when you sign, let's say, a Discovery History Channel, and they like your show idea, you sign on the dotted line, when you finish shooting an episode, they have to look at it. Their people, the higher-ups, the president or whatever has to look at it, and they tell you what not to put in there and what to put in there. Pretty much they have everything. They, they, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the way they want it to go. We have no say in it. At this point in time, when you sign something like that in Hollywood, you are just a paid actor. And, and, and they come up with a script. You read it. You do what they tell you to do. They give you the money. Next. This time, it's like I am the executive producer. So my production company, they have very hard connections in Netflix. That is going to be... Um, that is going to be a standby avenue in case corporate in Texas with their 83 affiliates, if we decide to go with them, but they said, you know what, um, you, you can't talk about this, can't talk about this, can't talk about this. Well, then it's going to defeat the purpose of my show because I want to show you what's really happening around the world. And I can't do that if they're not going to allow me to really speak my mind. So... Um, that's what one of my, my producer, when we had, uh, when we were finished shooting at a certain location and we sat around to watch this episode, uh, that aired this past Saturday and because we couldn't stay up that night to, cause we were going to be shooting at the Sanger Herald the following night. Um, you know, we were talking among ourselves and even he came up with that. He said, you know what, if we continue doing what we're doing and we get picked up by, by the, you know, the culprit in Texas, um, we'll pretty much get to put on whatever we want to put on and not be bullied by the higher-ups in Hollywood because this is not Hollywood corporate in Texas. This is not, you know, the big boys in Hollywood. This is a separate entity who owns stations, TV stations, who buys their content from Hollywood. So in other words, he would be buy the content straight from us. So we're bypassing Hollywood. You guys follow me? And I would love for that to happen. And it looks like it might happen that way. So I'm excited. So on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. I need to go back inside and take another shower and relax. I have tomorrow off, um, which is cool. Um, no filming tomorrow. I am going to sleep in. And I need to catch up on some more rest because I have a feeling the end of this week it's going to be another massive day of shooting. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be shooting yet. My production crew are in talks among themselves to figure out what the next episode is going to be about. But this Saturday night coming up is going to be about Spirits, Ghost, and Sanger Herald. And uh, we have some cool footage and stuff to show you. I'm, that's, I'm just going to stop right there. So, you guys, I'm done. No! Yeah, unfortunately, that's it for me. I am done. Um, I will try to make it again. I will try to make it back here up next Sunday. If we're not filming, I will do it. But you guys um, keep watching. You know, when I create a event, if you are not, well, obviously you get emails and stuff when I create an event. So just uh, keep your eyes open, and uh, we'll hopefully we can make it again Sunday. Uh, hopefully Alan will be okay to come in and uh, we'll go ahead and do it. So, all right, you guys, thank you for showing up today on a Monday. Uh, I know it's not the regular time and I know it's like you're out for work. People are still working. They'll probably come back and watch us later on, but there you go. All right. For Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas, which is who is asleep. See you next Sunday. You have been listening to Bye. Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on our Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain.